Hey everybody, it's Kelly and Sophie Doyle. She's taking a nap right there. Uh, it's been a while. So in this video, she has a boo-boos. Stop licking. Stop licking. Stop licking. It's like 10,000 times louder when your dog licks when you're in the van. I'm like, honey. Oh, Lordy. Hang on. Okay, so in this video, we're going to do a quick update. And then I'm going to talk about my experience, city dwelling, what they call stealth camping for four months. Because my experience, as usual, has not been like the experience I was seeing on the videos. <laughs> so we're going to talk about top five pros, uh, pros, cons, and, and, and uh, tips. My brain's not working. That's a part of the reason why we haven't. And we're just going to do this. We're going to do this. Hey guys, a quick note. So my five minute video turned into 33 minutes. I got it down to 26, so I have to split it in two. So it's gonna be part one and part two. So this video is a quick update. Uh, things I initially got over, the initial issues I go, of city dwelling that I got over, and the pros of city dwelling. The next video, which will come after this soon, will be the challenges and things you need to know before you go. So take notes, you guys, because like I said, these are, I'm experiencing things that I didn't see in videos when I was watching videos for two years. Uh, and I'd also love to hear other people's solutions to some of the challenges that I've encountered, city dwelling and stealth camping. So grab your popcorn, kick off your shoes, sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Okay, sorry for the lighting. It's raining again. Hope you guys can see me. So, quick update. Basically, um, I don't do well city dwelling. Uh, stealth camping. I've been here for four months. It's kind of like being at the RTR. Some of you who know me know what happened to me at the RTR. My brain's down all the time city dwelling. And the little windows of time I have uh, on catching up on stuff. You're running around. We'll talk about that later. But, uh, actually, we're not. That's it. My brain's down. That's where we've been. Um, I did get away to a campground and we're gonna see if I can get this video out. I do have notes like being there uh, And that's the only details I want to go into. It's not been good. It's not been good <laughs> And uh, I can't leave the Bay Area until I get the new vehicle and I am NOT hitting the road Until I get out of this minivan. I can't be in the minivan anymore. I just can't we're not gonna go into details It's not working out to infinity. Okay, it's not working out uh, to infinity um and some people are saying, you know, go buy a road, go, you know, go on the road and buy one. They don't have two vans. Uh, my buyer changed her plans. I have no buyer. So uh, buy the vehicle and then I'll have two vehicles. So here in the city, I have a place to park my vehicle. I got my storage here where I'm putting stuff in and moving stuff around. I have people who can drive me to the vehicle. See, you know, if I'm on the road, when I go see the vehicle, then I have two vehicles to drive. Uh, and that's also smog. California smog, it's more strict than most other states. So that's why we're staying here until we find a vehicle or die looking. <laughs> and we might, we might, we really might. So basically to sum up my experience so far, uh, it's, you know that expression, um, it's been the best of times, it's been the worst of times, except uh, no best times, no best times. But I did make an addition to the van, very excited. Um, added a mirror. <laughs> I finally found a mirror. You see that? You see that mirror, you guys? I know it's, it doesn't seem like a big deal. Small is big. Small is big when you make improvements to a van or probably anything. And it's true what they say. So I, I put it up, I got out, and then when I came back in and I saw the mirror, I'm like, oh, it's true what they say. It's like it really opens up the space. <laughs> like it really opens up the space. I feel like I'm in a 20 foot. 21 foot sprinter van <laughs> oh so the van surge um i'm looking for an rv i'm missing the a lot of stuff uh, amenities of a house and the closest thing i can get to that is a class b or c uh um and the ones in my price range so far are uh, not in good condition and there's no way i'm taking any chances on something with you know i'm on a little lower budget when you have a little budget you want the most reliable vehicle you can get and, you know, sometimes I can't get to them in time, and the good ones go really fast. I'm going to interject here really quick for a second. Um, the reason why I'm looking for an RV. So, in a van, everything takes longer. Everything is longer and harder. Get your minds out of the gutter, people. No. <laughs> um, and when you have a brain injury, everything takes longer. So, 
if you have a disability that affects your ability to do very basic daily tasks, uh, really think hard about a van versus an RV with every, um, it's just, things are easier in RV, like even washing dishes, I mean, spraying and wiping and spraying. And I'm thinking, God, I just wanna move on with my day. Whereas in an RV, this is one example, in an RV, uh, you have hot running water, you, you wash your dishes and you're done. You know, um, things like that. So I think an RV is gonna make my life much easier. So that's the update. Now let's get to the fun stuff. We're gonna talk about my experience, four months city dwelling and stealth camping <laughs> in a minivan with a dog and a brain injury. So I wanna say thank you so much for you guys, you know, sending comments and checking in on me. Um, that means a lot to me. Thank you, and I love you guys so much. Okay, before we go into the pros and cons, I'm gonna talk about three things that, and I am using notes, uh, my brain. Three things initially that I did get over, uh, living outside of campgrounds and in, in cities. The first one was sleeping in parking lots in my pajamas. You know, taking my bra off, uh, I mean, my pajamas are a t-shirt and sweats, but still, I have no bra on. I'm in a public parking lot. I'm like, what if someone comes knocking? That you really made me uncomfortable in the beginning. I pretty much got over that. Um, undressing. So in the beginning, you know, I'd start in, I'm in my van and I'm like, again, I'm taking my clothes off. And it seems like Murphy's Law, like I'm half naked and then there's people stop right by your van and have a conversation. And they're just standing there by your van. And it was just really weird. I'm like, God, there's strangers three feet from my body. Just this little piece of metal in between. It was really unnerving to me. And these are things no one ever talks about. So I got over that. <laughs> and using the bathroom, like there's times I'd have to use my bathroom in a public parking lot. Especially if you have like an upset stomach, you know, and you're there and you're on your toilet. And then people come to the car. As soon as you get on the toilet, they come back to the car. And they're like two feet from you. And they're like, you know, looking around. They're like, honey, I think that car has gas. <laughs> you know what I mean? I got over that too. Okay, so stealth camping city dwelling is not for everyone. I know, I know a lot of people, especially introverts, who can't handle more than a week. So I thought, yeah, I'm gonna do this video because people need to know the truth. The stuff I've experienced, I'm not seeing it, I never saw in the other videos, the two years I was watching people. And the, there's these YouTubers out there glamorizing, you know, get rid of your house, sell your house, and get rid of your apartment, and live in a van. And I was watching those videos, and I'm like, yeah, yeah, that's, that's, that looks good, that looks good. Yeah, yeah, and then I do it, and I'm thinking, no, no. I'm like, no, uh, no, no, this is not good, this is not good. You know, there's a couple that I watched a lot, they're in the Bay Area, and, you know, they did a video how they went into the city, and then they wake up in the morning, they're parked at a parking meter in this San Francisco, and then they woke up in the morning, and they're like, okay, we're just gonna walk across the street and bathe in a five-star hotel bathroom I'm thinking no no are you no what if everybody did that because to to them we're homeless people people in a five-star hotel I swear to god they walk across the street and they go bathing you know they're in the bathroom you know the patrons come in hey morning how you doing I'm like no that's not reality you don't go into five-star hotels and do your bathing this is not Reality, what if everybody did that, right? Um, and that same couple, they'll like pull up to a city park and they're like cooking their breakfast out, you know, on their walk, you know, people are walking by, they're like, morning, bacon. It's like, no, what if everybody did that? It should be okay, but that's not stealthy. That's not stealthy at all. <laughs> and I don't want people seeing into my van. So I don't know. To me, I don't want people seeing everything, especially in a city. You don't want everybody to see, oh, look at that. You know, you'd be a target. And there's another guy who uh, says, you know, city dwelling, it's all in your head, how it works out. It's all in your head. And I believe that to a point, but absolutely. But on the other hand, I'm thinking, no, no, it's not all in my head. It's hot in this van. I'm cramped and my, I'm peeing in a plastic container that's sticking to my butt cheek. Uh, but we're going to start with the pros. Um, and I'm, I'm looking down on the notes, the notes, because my brain. Um... Pros of city dwelling, I have three. <laughs> Accessibility. When I was on the road, uh, Oregon and Arizona, I had a really hard time 
um, getting certain things like uh, her dog food. Uh, Arizona, I had to drive 80 miles or whatever. I, there's a lot of places I couldn't get her food, my certain foods. No, it was quartzite and then uh, like my supplements and things. There's a supplement I take every day daily. And in quartzite, I ran out because I didn't plan well. Um, I don't know what happened, but uh, I had to drive 80 miles. 80 miles, you know. So in the city, everything you need is there. Everything you need is there. And that's a huge one for me. Number two is entertainment. It's fun. It's exciting. There's always stuff to do uh, if you're abled. You know, if you're an able-bodied, healthy person, you can be out all the time. And, and that would be fine. You'd be out all the time and sleep at night. Three is socially, um, you know, anytime if you feel lonely, you can go to a coffee shop. You can go to a bar. You can, for me, my plan was to go to open mics. I thought, well, you know, if I get lonely, I'll just go to open mics. I never made it, though, because my brain was down all the time. I never made one open mic, no. But that is available. You're not going to be lonely like you would out and boondocking sometimes. So it's fun, it's exciting, and you're never alone. Okay, so now for the cons, the number one for me is um, you're never alone. <laughs> okay, you guys, that's the end of the first half of stealth camping and city dwelling. My experience, four months of stealth camping and city dwelling. And the next section is going to be all the stuff you all need to know before you go. So I'm Kelly Doyle. This is Sophie Doyle. <laughs> Thank you for watching. Have a beautiful day and follow your bliss.